Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, and today I'm here to talk to you about Infoblox's security. Here we have two clients. The first one I'm showing you is not protected by Infoblox. In this case, the user has multiple files, some personal like the puppy picture, some notes, and some personal identification information. These files are important to the user in different ways in order for them to get their job done optimally. Now lucky for them, they heard recently from a colleague of an awesome site to go to to get some awesome deals on a flight for their vacation they're about to go on. In this case, the user does what every other good employee will normally do, and downloads everything without thinking twice about it. Unfortunately for the user this time, downloading blindly takes a turn for the worst, as all their files are encrypted and are no longer usable. Not just hurting themselves and their personal pictures, but also losing valuable notes and personal identification information needed for them to get their job done. Now let's see what happens when Infoblox is protecting a user with an example. Here the user will make a malicious request to Blocks One Threat Defense Cloud. Blocks One Threat Defense will block the user and an Infoblox appliance will pull the information down. The information pulled down will be shared with third-party vendors with context on what occurred. And finally additional context was sent to the SIM. Now let's see that in action. Here another user, in this case protected by Infoblox, goes and gets the same deals our first user tried to get. But before the user has a chance to download the malicious file, they are blocked from going to the site. Now in this case, it's the company's policy to block anyone who may be infected from accessing the corporate network. And here we'll see soon that the user is blocked from accessing HQ. Now here inside Blocks One Threat Defense, we can see that the user has been blocked. Additionally, we can see additional information on the user, such as the IP and MAC address, and whatever else we discovered. Then when we head over to Infoblox, we see an appliance is going to push out the information to some third-party vendors. We can also see that it's pulling down the information every minute. Then heading over to ServiceNow and hitting Refresh, we can see a ticket was created, with actions that took place, with context. And here we can see that the firewall blocked the user, and we can see on the right that the user no longer has access to the HQ. And going to Fortinet and hitting refresh, we can see that the user is added to the block list. Then heading over to our vulnerability scanners, we can see that the scans have occurred, both for Tenable and Rapid7. Then finally on Splunk, we can dive into the events and see that a user accessed two malicious sites. However, we can now search for additional users who might have accessed one of the sites here. And sure enough, we have a user who may actually be infected as the user in the past hour has accessed the site nearly a hundred times. Additionally, Infoblox sent contextual information on the event and when we go to the reporting and analytics, we see an event with highlighted fields that we can drill further into if desired. Well, thank you for your time. I'll assume that this was helpful. If you have any additional questions, be sure to reach out and I'll be sure to help.